morning, True Divine. Good morning, True Divine family and friends, both in person and online. For this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. For we shall bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continuously be in our mouth. His mercies are new every day. Come on, let's give him some praise this morning. Hallelujah. Are you glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Hallelujah. So this month, pastor is teaching us about stewardship. A steward is one who manages or looks after another's property. We know that all things belong to God. We are stewards of the life God has given us. But we know that we were bought with a price and our lives are not our own. He has also given us resources. There are three basic resources that we're gonna talk about this morning. The resource of time, talents, treasure, or in today's time, we would say our money and how we manage the resources that he has entrusted to us reflects on our very own personal relationship with God. For the word of God tells us that the first requirement of a steward is that he be found faithful. Now this is the time of our service where we've set aside for corporate prayer. We ask you to stand if you are able to stand. We stand together in reverence and in honor of our King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We invite him in this morning for he is worthy of our praise. Let us go before the throne of grace. Father God, we just thank you for this day, Lord God. God, we say to you how excellent is your name. Excellent God in all the earth. There is none like you, Lord God. And we give you the due honor and praise and glory this morning that is due to your name. Father God, we thank you for this new day. And we ask you, Lord, just to have your way this morning, Lord. Do what you need to do. Do what you want to do, Lord God. Heal the sick, Lord God. Restore the brokenhearted, Lord God. Save those, Lord God, who are lost and bring them into the kingdom of God. Father God, we just bless you, Lord, and we thank you for everything that you have done and everything that you are doing. We thank you, God, that we are set on the authority of our pastors, Pastor Stephen and Yolanda Huntley. And God, we will follow after them as they follow after you, Lord God. God, we bless your name this morning. We honor you. We ask that your presence just come on in and rest heavily, Lord God on each and every one of us, Lord God, because it's not about us, Lord God. It is all about you. Hallelujah. 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 That's the highest praise known to mankind. And we give you that this morning, Lord, because you are worthy. Now let us make a loud profession and confessions together regarding the resource of time. If you would, repeat after me. According to Psalms 90 and 12 and Ephesians 5, 15 through 17, it says, So teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Look carefully then how you walk. Live intentionally. Do not get caught up 
in foolish activities because it steals away your valuable days. Father, I realize that time is a precious resource that you have entrusted to me to steward. Father, I ask for forgiveness for time that I have idly wasted. Father, I know that you are the master planner as evident in creation. Lord, I confess and know that only you know how things will turn out. So Father, I seek your wisdom before I make my own plans. I ask you, Holy Spirit, to bring all things to my remembrance. I surrender my time to you, Lord. Help me to recognize distractions in my day, in my life, distractions that are both good and bad. Father, I will no longer allow distractions to overshadow my time. My time with you in prayer and the study of your word on my job in my household responsibilities or in my relationships. I will be faithful with my time. I will not procrastinate. I will do everything as unto you, Lord. For according to Romans 14, 12, so then everyone shall give account of himself to the Lord. Hallelujah, bless his name. Hallelujah, bless his name. Time is a precious, precious resource. And God is so wise that he equalized it and gave us all the same amount of time for each day. We each have 24 hours to do what we can and what we should do for the upbuilding of the kingdom. Hallelujah. Now concerning the stewardship of our spiritual gifts and talents, let us make profession and confession. Repeat after me, according to Romans 12 and 6 and 1 Corinthians 12, 4 through 6. Since we have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, each of us is to exercise our gifts wisely. Now there are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. And there are differences of administration 
but it is the same spirit the same God worketh in all things hallelujah 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 Lord oh you are worthy of praise since I am a believer in Jesus in Jesus Christ I must actively seek to use my gifts and talents for the upbuilding of the kingdom of God. I won't try to make room for my gifts myself, but I will rely on the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Psalms 39, 13 through 14 says, for, for thou hast formed my inward parts. Thou hast weaved me in my mother's womb. I praise thee, God, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works. Father, we declare that you created each of us with unique skills and abilities that set us apart from each other. I speak what you say about me. I know the proper use of my gifts and talents so that they will bring glory to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah God. Hallelujah, we want you, Lord God. Lift you up with those God-given talents, Lord God, and those spiritual gifts, Lord God, that you have give, given us for the edification and the upbuilding of the body of Christ. Father God, we thank you. And concerning, Lord God, stewardship of our money, let's make confession and confession. I declare, according to Philippians 4 and 19, there is no lack in my life, nor in my household, for God has supplied all my needs, according to his riches in glory. God, you are my source. I declare that Jehovah Jireh is my provider. He has already provided what I need. Now, if you receive these confessions and professions this morning, if you received them this morning, come on, let's give God some praise, hallelujah, for all the wonderful things that he has done, Lord God. Let's give him some praise in this place. Let's give him the highest praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Lord, hallelujah. We bless your name this morning, Lord God. We honor you, God, in all that you have given us, all that you have entrusted to us, Lord God, because it is our desire, Father, that you be glorified, Lord, in all that we do and all that we say. Bless the Lord, oh, my soul. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Come on and put those hands together for the glory of God this morning. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. 
Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Anybody here been redeemed this morning? Hallelujah. And we come to give God all the glory. Let's do his name. Hallelujah. Perfect. 
washed in the blood of the Lamb. God gives you a sense of renewal and a sense of understanding that you have no reason to fear. No matter what is set before you, no matter what you stumble upon, no matter what is presented to you, you know that you can go forth in it in confidence, knowing that you can do all things through Christ that gives you the strength. You know that you are more than a conqueror through Jesus Christ that loves you. God is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. We have no reason to fear, hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we go forth confidently in God, knowing this. Hallelujah.
walking in the call of God. I'm no walking in my call of God, yeah, yeah, I'm no longer a slave to fear, for I am a child of God, hallelujah, oh, thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord, through the mind. Bless the Lord. The song says, I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. Let's give our new believers, our ones who are baptized this morning, a hand clap of praise. It says, heaven is rejoicing, so I know that we can do that also and rejoice for them. They have been redeemed. Amen. On behalf of Pastor Stephen and First Lady y Yolanda Huntley, I want to welcome you to our worship service this morning, to all of you that are here today, and to our online family. Welcome. And we pray that you have, have, have experienced God today and that he, he will answer whatever it is on your heart today that, that you're in need of. Uh, I do not have an announcement for you today, which is a, was a good thing, but I'm going to introduce to you a person, uh, Pam uh, Williams. She's our director of, of community development, and she has one announcement for you. Uh, community development is doing a great work, and she's going to bring that before you now. Amen. Good morning, True Divine. Okay, come on, come on. Good morning, True Divine. Okay, I want to, uh, first of all, there's an issue in our community. One out of seven families and one out of five children struggle with what we call food insecurity. Now, what food insecurity is, it means that they don't have enough food to maintain a health healthy life. So in the past uh, almost a year now, we open up what we call a BYOB, bring your own bag food pantry where we serve healthy foods and uh, you have a variety of choices. So it's a client-based food pantry. And we also, uh, we serve about 300 people every time our doors are open. Uh, we also do a backpack program where we provide weekend foods for children that don't have enough food on the weekend. So it's about 238 children that we provide food for every week. So um, what I'm here today is to invite you to stop in the Welcome Center. We have a table set up. There are simple things that we need uh, to like, for instance, send out boxes, homebound boxes to our folks who can't make it into the pantry. We need t-shirt bags to pack bags of food for the children. So we have a, an array of items. I'm very visual, so we made it visual for you guys today. So you can take your cameras, you can bring them out there, you can take pictures. If you work for a company or you may own the company, if you have these items and you're willing to partner with us and donate them, we would love for that to happen. So see us in the Welcome Center, and thank you. Hallelujah. We mentioned first service about how daily we have to stay before the Lord for constant renewal, stay in our word and make sure that our prayer life keeps us in alignment with what God's word says for our life. It's a constant renewing of ourselves and we have to constantly present ourselves before the Lord and self-inspect and Lord, you know, check me out and if there's anything, you know, within me that's not right, remove it. Um, just a constant staying before God for a renewing of our minds and our hearts, making sure our hearts and minds are pure and clear and that we are in alignment with his will for our life. And so this song mentions how, Lord, we give ourselves away to you for the master's use, for your glory, 
so that your will can be fulfilled in our life and that you will be pleased with us, Lord, so that we can align with your will and that we can help draw others to you. So, Lord, I give myself away. In the praise and worship ministry, we give ourselves away. In your life, in whatever capacity, you give yourself away daily. So you can use me, Lord, for your glory and for the uplifting of your kingdom. Hallelujah. I give myself away. I give myself away so you can use me. I give myself away. Whoa. I give myself away so you Come on, all over the house. I know most everybody knows this. I give myself away. I give myself Come on, real sweet. So you, so you can use me. I give myself away. Right there, I give, myself, I give away. myself away. Somebody needs to get that in their spirit this morning. Lord, we give ourselves to you, Lord. I give myself away. It's not about us. So you it's all about your glory. I give myself give away. Myself away. Set apart for the master's use. Yeah, I give myself, give away. myself away. So you. So you can you use me? I give myself away. I surrender my heart, my will, my mind. I give myself away. So you can you use me? I give myself away. Oh God, I give myself away. So you can here I am, here I am. I stand right here, Lord.
myself to you. I give myself, I give myself. 
tell him what he already knows about himself Woo. you're so loving you're so kind you're so mindful of us you're so forgiving you are our redeemer you are our restorer you're faithful demonstration of your spirit thank you father that when all of the gifts and the talents come together your name be praised and magnified thank you father for removing burdens and destroying yokes in right time and you show up we thank you, Father, for you delivering us from old moments, old crises, old situations and circumstances, all in a moment of worship. We adore you. <laughs> Wisdom and knowledge on what to do when we didn't know what to do happened in worship thank you father thank you and so we honor you and thank you father for your presence we ask that you will engage in your word cause your word to come alive be active change the hearts of men give affirmations to things that people have been praying about Give us the courage to respond in a positive way. We thank you for it. In advance, in Jesus' name, amen. Will you give God a big thank you in the sanctuary as well as online? Praise God. Glory to his name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Uh, just want to uh, place emphasis on a couple of our announcements before I get into the word. Ms. Pam and uh, community development is going to be out in the Welcome Center afterwards to talk to you about our food pantry. It's one of the um, uh, ways that our church really serves the community uh, through our Community Development Corporation. And uh, Ms. Pam is the director and she and her team will be 
out in the Welcome Center afterwards. Um, we talked a little bit after the first service. A lot of people were asking about volunteering. This is not the aim nor the goal of your greeting her today. Today is to kind of get to know what they do and uh, why they do what they do and how they do it. And uh, later on, we'll be asking for you to volunteer as well as support financially as we uh, serve the community as a local body of, of Christ. Uh, secondly, we have our um, orientation this evening at 7 o'clock p.m. for all of those that um, said that the Lord called you into the gospel ministry and you signed up. Today is orientation day for level 100. Level 100, remember, is for those that uh, know that God has called you to, to preach the gospel, but you have not preached your first sermon. Uh, level 100 is about preparing you for uh, that first public message that the Lord has given you. Uh, level 200 is about ordination, and that is uh, sacerdotal duties or sacred duties of a minister. Uh, they are like um, organizing a praise and worship service or um, you know, doing a communion and uh, burial services. And uh, uh, what is the other one? I can go through all of them, but I won't do it. Uh, marriage, weddings, all of that, counseling. That's what, uh, and, and those things, believe it or not, uh, you have to be ordained to do those things. You, you can't just jump up and say, I'm going to do it. That's, that's illegal. That's, I mean, really, that's really jail time. Right? And I know you say, the Lord, the Lord called me. Can't no man stop that. What you're really saying is that you won't do what you won't do. That's right. uh, yeah, all the things that God called anybody to will always be lawful. Just remember that. Anything God calls people to will always be lawful. You don't do any, God don't do illegal stuff, amen? All right, so that's, uh, uh, that's uh, uh, for all of the ministers that have signed up this evening. I look to see you on, um, uh, on the uh, link. Everything is online. Uh, I said in the first service this morning that uh, if, if you're gonna be in ministry today, you gotta be uh, able to do more than just text. So if you're saying right now, I signed up, but I, I ain't got no correspondence, Check your email that you hadn't checked in the last 20 years. It went to that email address that you sent us, right? So we're not calling you, and uh, I, I think this first time they sent you a text from the uh, system, but we're not trying to text you and call you. We want you to be able to use these platforms, because if you can't use the platform, don't worry about preaching. If you can't use the platform, especially if you start today, it's something different if you, you know, you've been in ministry for a while and uh, you need to get the, uh, you know, you need to brush up. But if you, if you 20, 30 years old and you, 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 you know, you ain't got no email address, you got a problem. You already missed the harvest field already. So, so we, you know, we just we want to make sure you got the proper tools, but you need to know the seriousness by which uh, God is calling people today to uh, affect the lives of people and call them into the kingdom of God. Amen. All right, I think that's, that's all I have. Okay, all right. So I'm going to uh, 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 give you a little, little brush up today on uh, where we started last week uh, centered around the series of messages for this month, month of, um, what were we in April? Yeah, is that right? We're in the month of April. Um, and it's on stewardship. Uh, Pastor Nix this morning uh, ministered on stewardship, did an outstanding job, and uh, we're so glad that God used him in a, in, in a unique way. And uh, so today, I, I, I want to start breaking down the three areas that I shared with you on last week uh, that are meaningful where stewardship is concerned. It's simple, but if you get the, 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 the meat of the simplicity of these three words, as a Christian, you're going to grow in the right way. Everybody say right way. Yeah, so now just realize that if there's a right way, there is a wrong way. And as a Christian, you want to go right way. You don't want to go wrong way. You want to go right way. So I learned in Baptist Training Union, that's BTU, back in the day, way back in the day, when they were training small children about doctrine of the Baptist church in the Baptist Training Union, I learned that God uh, wants us to steward three portions of our lives. That is our time, the talents that he give us, and our means. Today I want to talk to you about time and talent together. Next week I'll talk about means. 
But everything that God hath given us belonged to him. As I said last week, I spent time trying to dig down deep into the fertile soil of your heart to remove the idea and the notion that you own something. You and I don't own absolutely anything, whether you believe that or not. I said last week, all you got to do is just live up to the time that you die. And then take your last breath and just ask God, the moment you leave here, look back and see if you can take some car keys with you. I want you to just, as a spirit being, reach back and see if you can get that natural car key that you paid all that money for. And see, won't you miss them keys and somebody else gonna pick them up and say, I'm glad that they gifted me while they were here. It happens to us all whether you're the richest man on planet earth or the poorest person on planet earth. None of us own anything on the planet. It'll be owned by somebody else on the other side of your living. Hence, having the right attitude and the right perspective where things on planet earth are concerned is important. It'll give you the right heart toward that thing. It'll give you the right heart toward people and how to use it properly so that God can get glory out of your life where using that thing or whatever that is to make sure other people are, as I wrote in my notes, other people are given some level of an advantage through your life. And, and it's important, it's important to, to realize just simply as the psalmist says here in Psalms 24, one and two, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. For he, God, hath founded upon the seas and established it upon the floods. In other words, everything that is on the planet, the psalmist says, it belongs to God, is his. And if you think that you can outsmart God, he put in here, and the fullness thereof. Now, I know for a lot of us in this room and online today, you've got to make some adjustments. Because in your mind, you think you got it going on. You think, I'm the smartest person on the planet. I have more influence. I have more power. I have more insight. I got more stuff. And what you don't realize is the reason why you have all of that, we will not discount, we will not discredit the fact that you have all of that, but the problem is you haven't found the purpose by which you have it. It all belongs to God. Now, how can I use all of this wisdom and knowledge and this smartness that I have to be effective for God rather than for myself. Here's what I realized, that the, 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 the more that I use the gifts and the talents that God has given me for people, he blesses as a result of the gift being shared. Not, be, not the gift turning in on myself, but the gift being shared with others. Got it? That's how God blesses. God don't bless because you, you, you're hulling it up around yourself. The blessing comes, and it's, it's baked in. It's a, it's a spiritual law. Here's the spiritual law. You give, and it shall be given unto you. And then it, Paul goes on and says, this is how it's going to, or, 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 the, or the gospel writer goes on and says this. He says, this is how it's added to you. Good measure, press down, shaking together, run it over. See how it works? It's a spiritual law. It's called the spiritual law of sowing and reaping. Whatever you sow, you reap. It's, it's for everybody. Sinner, saved, agnostic, atheist, anybody who gives, receive. Boy, that's powerful. It's a spiritual law. It's a spiritual law. So just remember, if I don't revisit this, that everything belongs to God. You have to catch up with that notion. You have to really breathe that in. And if you breathe that in and catch up to that, now transform your life to fit that. Now you're going to gain the right perspective and you're going to start looking at things from a different perspective and using them so that God might get glory out of them. Amen? All right. So let's, let's, uh, let's start down uh, 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 the B path. Everybody say the B path. Yeah, see, I, got, I just went down the A path, now I'm on the B path, and then I'm going to get you to the C path, and then we're going to hit the path. Somebody said, where that at? We're going to go home, that's what we're doing. <laughs> so now, everybody say, he on the B path, but he still got a C path. 
All right, so we're on the B path, okay? All right, so the B path, if you'll write this down, uh, in order, in order to uh, use your, your time and your talent uh, 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 appropriately as a Christian, as a Christian, just remember this, the number one thing is you gotta learn to spend time growing in your relationship with God. I got amens over here. Everybody else just looking at me. Now, somebody say, say, say it with me. As a Christian, I, I cannot be a real Christian spending no time with God. Let that sit with you now. I can't say that I, I'm, I'm married to Yolanda there and, and, and don't spend no time. She come up here and snatch this mic off of me. So he married to me. He, he don't never spend no time with me. Mm. When you're in a relationship, you know this. It's not far from you. If you're in a relationship, the expectation is you spend time with me. I spend time with you. That's the expectation. Am I right? It is no different where God is concerned. God looks for us to spend time with him. Okay, now you may not know how to do that, but you should have an expectation of doing it. You'd be surprised how many people don't know how to go out on a date. They don't know how to do it. I mean, yeah, back in, you know, when they were a teenager, they were just shooting at it. And they were shooting at it when they was a young adult. And now that they're full grown, they're still shooting at it. So they, they don't know, they don't know. They're still telling you to meet them at the restaurant and your expectation is for them to pick you up at the house. But the reason why you have that gap in between your two expectations is because you lack communication. If you lack communication with God, there will always be a gap between you and God. You gotta learn how to close the gap by spending time with God. Got it? So there, there are three elements that, that I believe that every Christian should, should use in order to spend time with God. Number one, you have to spend time in the Word. You have to spend time in the Word. If, if, if as a Christian, as a Christian where, where, where time and talent is concerned, if, if you're trying to operate on behalf of God and have no Word in you, you're going to look silly. And there are going to be times in your life where you're going to get stuck. You're going to get stuck. Okay. I, I, I've, 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 I've had times where, you know, uh, uh, people come to the altar and, uh, and, and they ask for you to, you, you know, to pray for them, right? They want you to pray. Pastor, I want you to, I want you to pray for uh, uh, my knee, Pastor. But really, but really what they got going on is, is they know that they got a lung that, that, that they're, 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 they're weak in. So they're really coming out here with a knee, a knee situation, but they don't really, they don't want to really tell you about the lung. Y'all quiet. But since you, when, you, when you're in the word, you already know that God gives the gift of discernment. And so when the person comes down to pray, you start off praying about the knee, then you hear the Holy Ghost say, oh, no, no, leave the knee alone. They'll be all right. That's just exercise there. But it's that long that they hadn't told you about. Now I got a word of wisdom that came from the Holy Ghost. Now, watch this, the word of faith is going to now connect that faith that I have in God's ability now to pray for that long that they didn't tell me about. You'll be surprised at how many people are suffering right now because you don't spend time with God. And because when you pray, you pray in these prayers that are so empty and void because you don't spend no time with the word. So the word can give you another word on top of a word, on top of that word, through that word to another word. Oh, preacher, you preaching today. And so it's important it's important to spend time with the word. Listen, listen to what the psalmist said in uh, Psalms number one, 
He says this in Psalms number one. He says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of scornful. But his delight is in the law. Now, in the old covenant, they would have called, you know, law or, or, or the covenants and the testaments. But here's what, what, what he's referring to. It's referring to the, the written word. He said, they, spend, they delight in the law of the Lord or in the word. And in the word, do they meditate how long? Day and night. Day and night. Listen, don't let the latest trend on TikTok take over your time you're supposed to be spending with God. <laughs> now when it go down, you don't know what to do because you don't know what to do because you don't know what to do. But the Bible says if any man don't know what to do, let him ask God. But you've been asking TikTok. Well, you preaching good here. So it's important, it's important to understand that the, the time with the word is going to now, watch this, say it's going to root you like the psalmist said. It, he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bring forth fruit in his season. And whatsoever he do shall prosper. See, that's what the foundation of the word does for you. The second thing that is important to spending time with God is in worship and in fellowship, right? So, so I, I brought these two together because I want, I want you to see the, the essence of worship, not only in this setting, but worship individually. That every day you get up out the bed, you ought to have a time that you worship and honor God. Got it? You ought to have a time. Now, you can be riding down the road and worship and honor God. You, 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 can be, you can be at the restaurant and God give you a word and honor God and worship God. Does that make sense? All right. So it's important to realize that that's, that's a, a worship that comes along with your individual relationship with God. And then there is a community of worshipers that come together on a Sunday or Saturday or Wednesday and listen, I don't know about you, but I wouldn't miss that. You know, when I, when I was a, a, a young boy in, 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 uh, in a grade school, you know, grade one to 12, right, when I was a young boy in grade school, uh, you know, I didn't win too many academic awards. Okay, let me qualify it right then. <laughs> Anytime somebody tell you they didn't win something too many, that means they didn't win none. <laughs> So when they had award day at, at my school, my high school and elementary school, I wasn't expecting no A, B on a roll, none of that. You know, when we bring our kids out and they say, A, B on a roll, I wasn't going to, don't worry about it. I ain't signed up for that because I ain't on that list. <laughs> but when I, when I was sitting on the edge of my chair was in May of every year. And they would go through, go around, you know, they, they do the honor roll first. They, such, such, A, B on the road, eh? and this and that, that and it'll be clapping. Huh? And I'll be just sitting back looking at the lights, counting, I mean, lights out and all that. And then they say, they say, uh, all right, now we're going to give out uh, our uh, attendance awards. And I sit up on the edge of my seat. Because every year, first grade all the way to 12, I got perfect attendance every year. Perfect it, right? Yeah, thank y'all. Thank y'all. Yeah. Rest of y'all, don't worry about it. <laughs> and somebody say, well, Pastor, how can you how can you not be smart? You show up every day. Same way you weren't either. <laughs> we both weren't smart. <laughs> don't get offended though. Don't get offended. Stay with me. Stay with me. I'm going somewhere. But here's one of the notions I placed not only in grade school, but in my walk with God, that when the people come together, I want to be in the number. Now, I want you to understand, I'm not just talking about sitting in the sanctuary because you can now, today, everybody say today, you can now today be in the number and not be sitting in here with us. So if I'm out of church, I'm in church online. Oh, look at that, look at that, look at that. See, what, 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 what happens is that people miss 
the demonstration of God when they're not in the presence, right? The move that you just saw God make 15 minutes ago, a lot of people missed that move because they weren't in the place. Boy, I'm talking good here. Glory to God. They went online, they went in here. Folks online, they, they saw it. They saw, they saw the move happen. But there were many of us that missed it because we had something else to do. You know how we do it, I ain't gonna go there, I got something else to do. And that something else to do always come before being in the presence of God. Got it? So, so that worship time is essential to your, to, your, to your growth in the things of God and the fellowship. Listen to what it says in Acts chapter two, beginning at verse number one. Listen to what it says. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they, the 120, you'll find that in chapter number one of Acts, there were 120 people together and those 120 people, when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with what? Talk to me, y'all, it's on the screen. They were all with what? And what? They were all with one accord and they were all in one place. Now, what's the result of being on one accord and in one place? Well, listen to what it says in verse two. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire and it set upon each of them. You know, uh, pa Pastor and I this morning were talking about this, that there are a lot of young people that are like the Israel, Israelites. After God had done all the miracles, the signs and the wonders, the, the next generation started asking God, where are all the miracles and them signs and them wonders? We've never seen it in our generation. And most of the time, God shows up and God does supernatural miracles, but you just ain't there because you found something else to do. Woo, glory to God. Somebody say, somebody say, you know, that, that, that's a good church down there, but you know, I ain't, I ain't never heard no tongues go forth down there at that Baptist church. You heard it today, didn't you? You, you, heard, it, you heard it today, didn't you? you? You heard it today, didn't you? See, see, what happens is, oftentimes you get judgment because you ain't there. But if you're there, you can say to yourself, on this day in, in, in April, I was there and I saw when the Holy Ghost show up. I saw that the preacher didn't just walk out there and start praying. I saw him stand back in the corner. I saw him come out of the place of God and allow God to show up in the midst of the people. <laughs> when they're all in one place, they're all on one accord, the Holy Ghost show up. He shows up all in one place, all on one accord. And this is, a, this is the element of worshiping and honoring God all together. Now, I want to spend a little time, I ain't got much time, but I want to spend a little time talking about not only the local church gathering. You know, you know, people go around and talk about, well, you know, how Christians go to Beyonce concert and Christians go there. And, 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 you know, people do what they do, right? But, but here's what my challenge is to you, that now that you're born again, why can't you spend time among other Christians in a big audience like a Beyonce concert? <laughs> yeah, let me tell you something. I, I'm just, I'm just a testify. I'm just a, 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 a testify. <laughs> I have been, I have been, I have been in in big, huge meetings where 50, 60, 70 thousand Christians come together, and you, will you get? 50, 60, 70,000 Christians coming together and all of them honoring God at one time. I promise you, you can be an atheist. You will not walk out of that room still an atheist when all the believers come together and honor God and worship God and they're all on one accord. Now, here's what I want to say to you. When you're spending time and when you start talking about, you know, going on vacation and all that, do some leisurely things, but you need to consider being around other Christians in massive amounts. Well, you can experience God different than you do at True Divine. True Divine is just one element of the whole kingdom. There are, there are, other, there are other elements of the kingdom where people come together from all around the world. 
Some of you, you've never experienced other Christians from other parts of the world coming together, fellowshipping and honoring God. I talked to my wife this morning about one of our local pastors that, that uh, I'm going to bring here. I think he's from Nigeria. Some of you have never heard a Nigerian minister minister the word. We have a, a minister that is a, a, one of our pastors from True Divine, and uh, he's uh, uh, over, over a church in uh, South Africa. And he's been here on several occasions. And many of you have never ever heard him minister here. But what I'm saying to you, the body is bigger than the pew you're sitting on. Now, I'm saying all that to say that you got a talent in God's big body. Not only do you, God give you time and you must know how to manage that time, but you have a talent, a gift. That's what the Bible calls it. We call it talents. You have a gift and some of us have gifts Amen. that God has given to us so that we can use them for his glory. And through those gifts, they are unique. They are not like everybody else. Now, I want to say something here. I think I said this last year when talking about the same uh, uh, um, thought. I want to say that some of us need to repent because we need to repent because we limited God's ability to use other people's lives all because we thought God was just like us. People have lived and died knowing that God had a calling and an unction to function upon their lives and never used it because somebody held them back. Repentance is in order. Listen, I want you to understand, you are not to be just like someone else. Your gifts are unique to the calling that God has upon your life. Listen to me, when you come into a church, you, your, your gift may not be an usher, greeter, you know, uh, 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 sing on a praise team, I'm going to work in a children's ministry. It may be something totally unique, totally unique. You know, when I, when, I, uh, uh, when, we, when we moved to this campus, we bought this, this, this building, uh, uh, what, 14 years ago now, 14 years ago now, and, and, and we started our athletic program, right? We started an athletic program that included football, all of the basketball, had baseball at that time under the RBI league at that time, and, 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 and so many athletes started using their athletic gifts in the church. When I grew up, being an athlete was sinful. Oh, you quiet. So many preachers before this generation, if they're still leaving, they need to repent because we are relegating. We have relegated God's gifting of people to what we traditionally know as a gift inside the traditional church. I want to break that mold today. I want to break it. I want to break it so that you can know that whatever God calls you to doesn't have to be inside the church. He uses our lives everywhere we go. Everywhere we go. Praise God. I know all you men in here, you wouldn't use a barber that's not gifted. All the men say, show sure enough, Reverend. No, you, you want, a, you want, a, you want a, a barber that's gifted, capable. He, he works that craft that God has given him. See, you, you're not going to invite somebody over to, uh, to, to do plumber work that doesn't have a certification for being a plumber. You're talking about one leak, you're going to find 5,000. Got it? So it's important to realize that stop relegating God's ability to merely what you see on Sundays. God uses us beyond these walls and he has so many calls and so many gifts that he has already given to us. Now, preacher, where do you get all that from? All right, let's go to uh, two scriptures that I think are important that, that, that'll, that'll, that'll help you out, okay? All right, so now watch this. First of all, let me, can I read Titus chapter three, verse uh, eight real quickly here? Uh, remember this, that time plus talents and gifts always equals good works. If you spend time with God, Use your talents or your gifts, it will always equal good works. Now listen to what the Bible says about good works, Titus 3, 8. This is a faithful saying, and these things I will that thou affirm constantly, 
that they which have believed in God might be careful to maintain what church? Good works. Everybody say good works. I'm in Titus chapter 3 verse number 8. Let's see if we can get that on the screen real quickly here. Titus chapter 3 verse number 8. Listen to what it says. This is a faithful saying and these things I will that thou affirm constantly that they which have believed in God might be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable unto men. Notice what it says. When we do good works, these things are good and these things are profitable unto good works. Say it with me. That, that time plus talent equals good works. Say it again. Time plus my gift equals good works. All right, now what's the application of time and talent? It first must be applied at home first. Don't use your, your time and your talent for everybody else and your family go lacking. Preach it again, Rem. That's, 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 that's your mega church. Before you preach it to anybody else, do it at home first. And, by, and through blessing your own home, now you can bless the community. Got it? Now, you applied in your education, you applied in your employment, you applied in business strategies, you applied in friendships, and you applied to parental situations, and you applied in the community. All right, now, it's important that, that we now uh, spend time practicing our gifts and our talents. Say it with me, I'm gonna practice my gift and my talent. All right. So in Romans chapter number 12, verse 3 to 9, I want you to listen to this. For I say, through the grace that's given unto me, this is Paul talking to the church at Rome, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office or responsibility. Got it? Not everybody has the same responsibility. That's why Pastor Huntley is a pastor. I'm not a bishop. I'm not an evangelist. I'm not a prophet. I'm not an apostle. Who am I now? I'm only one. I'm not all five. You met the preacher say, one week he a bishop, next week he a apostle, next week he an evangelist. Something wrong, Rip. Find one and practice doing that. Identify with one and practice doing that. This, this is not social media. This is the church. This is the body of Christ. This is not culture. This is the church. This is the body of Christ. And in the body of Christ, we identify with our callings and our giftings based on God giving them to us and not for some church clout. I'm gonna clap and give myself an amen right through there. Got it? Now, now notice what he says. We, we, we're not all the same. Say that with me. We're not all the same. All right, so now watch verse 6. He says, uh, uh, having then... Gifts differing according to the grace that is given unto us, whether we prophesy, let us, let, let, whether uh, prophecy, let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith. Now, now I want you to get a hold of this because this is important. He says you should prophesy, if you got that gift, you should prophesy according to your proportion of faith. Okay? That means stop prophesying to everybody. I'm, I'm on, I'm on. You just got saved three days ago. Well, God give me a word for the president. No, he didn't. It said according to the proportion of what? Your faith. We all know you just beginning in the faith. So we're going to get you to prophesy to the children in the nursery first. No, you don't want to do that. No, you don't want to do that. See, so you don't want a nursery assignment. God called me to the world. Nobody's refuting that he called you to the world, just not right now. Ooh, all right, stay with us. Y'all looking at me funny. Stay with me. I got something for you while you're looking. 
Notice because what we're, what we're doing in the body of Christ, we're trying, to, we're trying to make the body of Christ like the world, like what you see on social media. I get the likes, I gotta get the followers, I gotta get, I gotta get, gotta get, gotta get, gotta get, gotta get, gotta get. And God has said, no, I add to you as I desire to add to you, not you going out to, trying to add to yourself. <sighs> Ambition is something else. I've seen many pastors fall because they were, they were ambitious and not realizing that when you, when you, when you it, they used to say this in the church, it's a cliche, it's not Bible, but it's a cliche, not Bible, it's a cliche. High the level? Y'all, y'all too young, come and go in. Let me go with the, with the senior people. High the level? Bigger the devil. It's not in your Bible, but you better listen to what they're saying. And what people don't realize is that, that you're trying to get in a hurry to be accomplished so you can tell everybody and put it on your resume and you forgot about waiting on God. If you don't wait on God, you're going to be out there by yourself. I want, you, I want you to listen. I want you to listen. I want you. He, he says this. He says this. Hold on, hold on. I'm coming to that scripture. I'm going to let you know when I get there. Right, now watch what he says. We don't have the same office. He says, so, so we, being many in one body, I read that, verse 6, having then gifts that, di that differ according to the graces given to us, let us prophesy, uh, uh, let, uh, whether prophecy, let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith. Here we are, verse 7. Or ministry, let us do what? What's that next phrase? Let us do what? Let us do what? Wait on what? Let us wait on our ministering. Let, let us wait on our ministering. Anybody who says, I'm called into the ministry and I want to pastor a church and they ain't scared, something wrong with them. I, I pastored two churches and I went in both of them shaking like this. <laughs> I went in there shaking. Sometimes I walk out here and shake. Some ministry platforms I've been on, I've, I've walked out and said, oh God, you sure you call me? Some people go out and, and before they go out, they go on Facebook and say, I'm, I'm about to go on, I'm about to go on, I'm about to go on, I'm about to go on. <laughs> and you ain't shaking? You ain't shaking, there's, there's, there's nothing in you that's saying, God, I get to do this, but I don't know if I'm doing it the right way. You called me to do it, but I'm going to do it because you called me to it, and I'm depending on you. No, we don't. It's not of ourselves. Paul says, if you've been in ministry, you wait on it. Now, what does he mean by wait? Here it is. It don't mean to do nothing. It means, Paul is saying, spend time training your gift. Spend time training your gift. You know, you know I, I, I'm an observer, right? I'm an observer. And, 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 and the moment that uh, uh, praise team and uh, led by uh, uh, Ms. Jackson, Ms. Maureen, uh, uh, the moment that uh, uh, Ms. Maureen went there. See, everybody don't know that moment when they go there. I mean, you got to be really full of the Holy Ghost. You already know when they go there, oh, this is about to change here. Something about to change up in here. Right? In that moment, I was standing over there, and I slipped back, and the Holy Ghost said, now, now I want you to watch all these gifts come together. And, and so Terrell, he was, he was on the keys there, and, and, and my boy uh, Troll, he was up, up on the, up on the uh, organ there. And, 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 and you know, these guys over here, bass lead, and, and the drum, them guys over there, and, 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 and they, were, they were playing. You, you, you can see each one of them gifts coming together. Each one of them coming together. Each one of them coming together. And, 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 and you, 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 you can see they, they, were, they were pushing. They were pushing Maureen. Maureen. Maureen were going like that. They were pushing. They were pushing. And then y'all were pulling. Y'all were pulling. When you, when you stood up and started to raise a hand, each gift was, was, was giving. And one was pushing. And one was pulling. And they were pushing. It, and they were pulling. And they were pushing. And they were pulling on each other. And all I could do was say hallelujah because I can't play nor sing. They were pushing and pulling and pulling and pushing and pushing and pulling and pushing and pulling and each one of them uniquely have a gift. He says, he says you, you got you to spend time training your gift. 
You know that God has called you to a certain thing, but you, you're not spending any time training your gift. You think, I, you think the only time that I get up and preach is on Sunday morning? I preach every day to myself in the shower. I preach in the car. I take texts. I still mess up sermons. I be walking sometimes and say, that ain't in the Bible. Let me correct that. I, I mess up on the backside of the walking track before I come out here and deliver the word to you. You got to practice your gift and your calling to make it sure. He said, now, verse 8 said, now, if you want to be an exhorter, practice exhortation. If you want to be one that gives and supports the kingdom, practice giving and do it with simplicity. He that is in authority and leadership, do that too. Do that with diligence. Show mercy and cheerfulness. Love without dissimulation or without dislike for each other. You know how know, sometimes people compete against each other? Well, you know, you know I can out saying them. When, people, when Christians start out saying each other, we don't do that here now, y'all. Be, between Beyonce and such such, and uh, Jay Z and such, let them do that out there in the body of Christ. We 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 appreciate, we value each other, and we support each other, and we love each other, and we boost each other up, and say, "Go, on, child, sing it for the Lord." Glory to God. Got it? We don't we don't do that in the body of Christ. In the body of Christ, we. We, we, we cheer one another on. Now, 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 now Pastor, Pastor Nick used this scripture this morning. Now, let me, let me show you how it works. Let me show you how it works. All right, so this morning, God, my time up. Oh, what happened? Okay, all right. All right. So, so uh, uh, this morning, I sat where you sitting. Except my seat was right over there. Where, Pastor Simmons, where your hand? Show him where I was sitting, right there. Sitting right there. And, and so Pastor Nix, he was preaching. And I had already got my notes together for y'all. But he was preaching so hard on the scripture I'm about to show you, I had to add it. It went in my notes originally. So if I'm a little long, bl blame Pastor Nix. Because this scripture was so good to connect with Romans 12 that I couldn't leave it out. Now, at 8 o'clock this morning, I was a receiver of his gift. Got it? Now, you are receiving my gift. Got it? Can I ask you a question? When are you going to be a giver of your gift? In my chest, in my chest out. I'm leaving now. I'm done. All of us have gifts. They're different from one another. But I just want to know when you're gonna start practicing your gift so that we can we can give you the mic and we can cheer you on. Or when you when God called you out there, wherever out there is, we can now say that they left us so that they may go out and spread the gospel uniquely according to God's call. But we can't we can't get nothing from you but your money. And that ain't enough. Don't let me come in tomorrow. That's what I gave my money. No, 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 no. We said time. Talent and yeah, all of us, all are giving our money to all this sweat. Money come behind this sweat. So we're not talking about money. We're talking about all of us having gifts, having abilities. Because as Pastor Nick said this morning, when when I when I get in a place where where it's beyond my ministerial call and gift, I need to be able to call you and say, Hey, I got such and such. That, that is in this particular field uh, of study or, or work or calling and, and I know you in the same thing. Now, now can, can, I, can I count on you to be able to help them now to navigate the closed doors? Boy, I'm talking good here. See, this is, this is the body of Christ that we can count on one another using our unique gifts and callings to be a blessing to each other. Amen? All right, 1 Peter chapter 4. First Peter chapter four. Y'all should have that, please. Please, please have it. Please have it. Please have it. Have it. Please, 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 please. All right. First Peter chapter four. Thumbs up if you got it. Thumbs up. All right. We good. All right. First Peter chapter four, verse nine to verse number eleven. 
He says, use hospitality one to another without grudging. He said, listen to me. He said, don't get jealous of one another. Listen, there's no need of getting jealous of Pastor Huntley. You ain't going to be able to preach like me and I ain't going to preach like you. Don't even try it. You can practice my little tone, whatever, voice elevation all day. At the end of the day, God ain't going to use you like he used me. You're going to have to get under God like I get under God every day to find your own unique voice in the things of God. Boy, I'm talking good here. Got it? Don't get jealous. Because you, you, you see the people singing, people playing, people greeting. You'd be surprised at people. But all our, our greeters, and, and they'd be smiling at you. Y'all mad because they're smiling. What are they smiling for? We're supposed to. We're supposed to be kind hearted one toward another. This may be the first church you've seen smiling people. Call us the smiling church, but we're not going to stop smiling. We're going to smile and love on you and hug on you. Maybe not hug, but give you a fist, pow, pow, pow. <laughs> Got it? All right, now watch what he says. Don't grudge, be grudging against one another. As every man hath received the gift, even so minister the same one to another. Use your gift to minister to another. Now listen to what it said in verse 10. As good stewards of the manifold grace of God. Verse 11. If any man speak, let him speak as of the oracles of God. If any man minister, let him do it as the, as the ability that God gives him. That God in all things may be what? glorified through Jesus Christ to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. That God be glorified. Not putting on no show. Old church not putting on any airs. Not trying to show out. Not trying to give you a moment. Notice the only moment that happened in this sanctuary today was a God moment. It's not about your moment. It's about everything God has given me. God, teach me how to take this gift and this talent, this ability, and use it for your purpose. Now listen to me. I want you to this week to evaluate your gifts and your talents and your abilities. And I want you to do what Romans 12 says. I want you to take those gifts and those talents and lay them down before God as an offering. God, I'm going to take everything that I am and I'm going to use it for your glory. I'm going to use it for your purpose. I'm going to use it to bring you glory in all things. We, when we first came in today, and if you came late, you missed this moment. But every second Sunday, we, we do baptisms here in the sanctuary. And what happens is, uh, while the praise and worship is singing and, at, at and honoring God, Pastor Hill and, and uh, Pastor Cam, uh, Pastor Hill is the assistant, Pastor Cam is the youth pastor, uh, they baptize the people of God in the watery grave. And that baptism is a unique moment. It symbolizes the beginning of me walking with God. It symbolizes the beginning of God getting ready to use my life. And so today I want to bring these candidates out one by one and I want you to just spend a few more minutes with us to, to honor those that have been in this watery grave coming up as risen with Christ in Christ so that he may get glory out of their lives. In a few minutes, I'm going to challenge you after they've been celebrated. If you want to be baptized, maybe you got baptized many years ago and you don't remember it, but I'd like to go into that watery grave and start this walk with God over. You'll be able to do that, and I'll tell you how in just a few minutes. But these that are coming, we get the opportunity as a, crowd of witnesses witness their beginning and watch them grow in the things of God where their gifts and their talents are concerned okay let's do it we'll tell Katora is going to tell us everybody's name
the certificate of baptism, this certifies that Kevin Orange Jr. was baptized uh, according to the Holy Scriptures as written in Matthew 28, verse 9 through 20, and Acts 20, verse 38. On this 14th day of April, I indeed have baptized you with water, but he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost. Mark 1, verse 8. Stephen D. Huntley, Senior Pastor, True Divine Baptist Church, 4601 Troy Highway, Montgomery, Alabama. Our first candidate, Mr. Kevin Orange, Jr. Aaliyah Orange. Jatavia Jones. Juan Jones Jr. Kyra Taylor. And Miss Malia Meeks. Flash and come on. Hold on, on boy. All right. So before before I take this picture now, uh, uh, Malia here now, she a prolific basketball player. Now, y'all, this, this girl here, this, this she a beast at Park, at Park Cross now. This is a beast here. So let me take my picture with the beast here. All right, please. Thank you. Y'all bless you. her real big. Glory to God. So we offer Christ to you. If you're in this room or you're online and you have never received Jesus Christ as personal Savior. Now I want you to hear me. I want you to think about all that you've done with your life. And then I want you to consider... I wonder if God's willing to use me. And the answer to that is absolutely yes. Now, it takes first step. First step is receiving him through his son Jesus as personal savior. That's a decision that you have to make after hearing the preached word, after hearing the gospel. Do you want to become born again? And if so, what I'd like for you to do is gather your things. If you come with somebody else and you want them to come with you, Ask them to come on to this altar. We're going to send you in our back. Our prayer team is there ready to pray for you and start you down this journey of living for God and being a representative and ambassador for him and his kingdom. Secondly, if you're in the room or online and you want to rededicate your life, I, I, I messed up so many times, Pastor, and I need to rededicate my life. I need to, I need to make a decision to come back to God. And by his grace... He's chosen you. That's why you're in this space. That's why you're in the online space. Come on, will you bless them that are coming? Y'all bless them real big as they come. So if you want to rededicate your life, this is a great moment to do that. This is a great moment, great moment. All right, y'all come on, bless them real big. Amen. Praise God. All right. Y'all make sure y'all show them, show them babies where to go now. Make sure you show them where to go. Amen. Amen. Now, if you want to rededicate, this is that moment for you. Rededicate your life. If you want to rededicate, if you have special prayer areas, Pastor, I need somebody to pray for me about this. I need them to pray for me about this. I've got such, such going on. This is that moment to come now. This is that moment to come now. All right. So now listen to me. Generally, it takes three stanzas of this song before you move. Come on, come on, Della, come on, come on.